delighted to be joined now by Sir Ian Duncan Smith. Thank Hi. you for joining me, Ian. Um, let's talk about online safety because you've gone from Tory party leader to party rebel over this issue. <laughs> Why is that? Well, it's not so much re rebellion. It's trying to get <clears throat> it's trying to get this um, this bill in order. It was very wide, but quite loose and quite intervene without any focus. The key bit of all of this bill is about safeguarding children. So uh, the bill doesn't have a real safeguard in it and that's what this is all about. It's about saying to those who are the senior managers, the people that run these online companies, uh, you will bear responsibility if you breach this, if kids are damaged as a result of what you put up on your, your media side and uh, there'll be criminal charges on that as well. I, get, I sense there's some mood music from the Culture Secretary, Michelle Donald, mm. to move a bit on this, but could Rishi Sunak face a defeat on this as far as the rebellion is concerned? Well, my understanding is there's certainly around 40 people that yeah. have signed it, and it's not because they want to defeat the government. The government's moving in the right direction, but our view is the one big bit in the whole online safety on harms bill is all about children. At the end of the day, that's really the yes. key thing that we have to protect. The group that are least able to support themselves, that's what this is all about. And Ireland's gone in that direction already, and none of these online companies have moved from Ireland. All of this is there, and we promised it twice in two manifestos. Can I ask, because you, first of all, were behind Boris Johnson's campaign and many supported Liz Truss, are you happy with Rishi Sunak as party leader? Because I get the impression that perhaps people on your side of the party regard him as quite wet. Uh, well, no, I don't. I don't have a, a particular view in that regard. I just know that as Prime Minister, he's got a very big task on his hands. Uh, my view about this is that this is not over yet. Although the polls are very big for Labour, it's not like 96, 97. It's not I don't, looking great, though, Ian. No, well, no, no. That, I think the public hasn't made their mind up. With Blair and Brown, they had by that stage. What I get and what I see in the polls, you look at the detailed stuff. There was a poll out two weeks ago that showed those who voted Conservative in 2019 have three very strong issues they want sorted and if he does those they admitted they may well go back to the Conservatives. But are you worried about time. your own seat though in Chingford because you're in a marginal I mean I know a lot of MPs are getting nervous they think that there could be a mass exodus from the party come 2024. I'm not going anywhere I'm going to fight that seat and win it and by the way everybody told me for the last two elections I couldn't hold on and I did so. But are you worried about not having the Boris factor the politician that reach, reaches parts that others can't? Uh, well, of course, I think Boris, you know, should be back doing campaigning. He's the great campaigner that we have, and he helps change the weather. That's what you want with it. And I think hope Rishi and he will come to an arrangement along those lines. I think that would make sense. We should use the best talents we've got in the party and not rule people off because either they've been around too long or because so they're it, not so quite So this right talk of him making a comeback, I mean, you'd like to see that? Well, I, I think, you know, when you have a man that is a great campaigner, I think it's useful for you, whatever else, to make sure he's on your side campaigning because we want to win the next election because I think that a lot of what's going on in Labour at the moment is a, a lot of shop window stuff. There's Although he's got this it. Privileges Committee looming ahead that we now mm -hmm. understand is going to be televised. Do you support that? The idea of televising what should be a private committee? Mm, no, I don't actually. And by the way, I just wonder what they're trying to find out because, you know, everything has been dug out. I, my general sense is from the public is they're sick and tired of the story, really. I mean, most, Party people, gate. Have, most people have moved on. Boris has gone. He's no longer Prime Minister. This looks to me like it was something started to get rid of Boris but ended up not actually happening because Boris is gone and the truth is right now there are bigger issues NHS taxation growth yeah. get the, uh, the the boats across the channel uh, stopped these sort of things are big issues for most of the public let's not talk about internal workings apart let's talk about taxation and growth because I would imagine that somebody of your persuasion thinks that taxes are too high on the electorate and equally perhaps that the Treasury is overcautious when it comes to economic policy. We learned this week from the uh, latest figures that growth was higher than expected. Mm. Perhaps it's the World Cup factor, but the Treasury has now got another £11 billion to play with. Is this uh, symptomatic of this idea that the Treasury is far too negative about this country's prospects? Well, the one thing to remember is almost every single forecast produced by the OBR or any of the great and the good is almost certainly wrong. <laughs> uh, and uh, if we start from that, all of the forecasts were very pessimistic. Uh, I thought far too pessimistic. Uh, I think that they've uh, felt the UK economy was going to go deeper into recession. I've never felt that. I think these figures show that there's a very good chance that we'll be able to come out and start growing. And that's the key. But that doesn't seem to be Hunt and Sunak's attitude. I mean, it's all very much steady as she goes. It's all going to be terrible. You know, nobody can see this growth pie growing. 
Well, the truth is, two things happen. First of all, the UK economy is shown in these figures. It's much more resilient. You know, after all, there's still huge numbers of jobs out there. Filling them is the problem, not, you know, having to support people out of work. That's the key bit. Uh, and the second bit is, I think Rishi Sunak, as I know him as Prime Minister, is in his heart somebody who wants to reduce taxation. So there will be a moment and well, he's got... There's nowhere else it can go, let's face well, it. Well, I know. It's too high. And he knows that. But we've got to get the taxes down. We do it at the right moment, which is sometime in the early part of this year, I think. And I think that will help drive greater growth. And if we get that, I think the game uh, of who wins the next election starts to change quite dramatically. Although, how did you feel when Shadow, Shadow Work and Pension Secretary Jonathan Ashworth <laughs> turned up at your think tank in the week at the CSJ, the yeah. Centre for Social Justice, talking about what Labour would do about welfare? I mean, he gave, gave the kind of speech that you would have given? I think I'd already given it, actually. <laughs> I think the truth is, plagiarism. I think um, CSJ has never been an organisation to favour either the Conservatives or any other party. It's an organisation about how do you best help the poorest and the most deprived in society. If people want to come and join our ideas, I'm but in favour of But it's a direct appeal for the Tory voters, isn't it? I mean, you've got well, Labour used parking be, their tanks on your lawns. Yeah, but to be fair, he actually based almost all of what he said on what the CSJ had already written and argued with the government. Now the yeah. government is saying, well, we might end up doing the same. That's the point of having an organisation like the Centre for Social Justice. It makes politicians face up to the reality that change is necessary. How do you do it? How do you get more people back into work and people off? While, while I have you with your foreign affairs, affairs hat on, mm -hmm. the execution of this uh, UK um, Iranian um, national, the deputy uh, defence minister there, is obviously shocking. There's now talk in the papers about us re-entering the fray when it comes to the Iran nuclear deal. What's your reaction to that? Well, I have some time considered that the Iranian nuclear deal is a, a bad deal. Uh, they've got everything out of it they wanted and the rest of the world hasn't got a hold on the nuclear development. So we shouldn't uh, do it? Well, I, I would come out of it. I'd also, um, personally, I think it's time for us to sanction, and we should have done it ages ago, the Revolutionary Guard, uh, why we've dragged our feet when others have done it. And finally, I think we may even consider bringing our uh, okay. ambassador back. Thank you very much for that, Ian Duncan-Smith.